Joe Murray. What a win by the Bees tonight. Nashville could not score. Boring. And then the third period happened. And then Linus Allmark happened. And the Bruins come away with a 3 0 shutout victory. They have now 44 wins on the season. They went out on the road tonight and took care of business. And as you just heard, coming back from break, Linus Allmark, tremendous tonight between the pipes. Had 32 saves and had some really, really highlight real plays to get the win for the Bruins tonight, his second shutout of the season. He also had an assist tonight. And I can't talk enough about Charlie Coyle and what he has added this year for the Boston Bruins. So the Bees go on the penalty kill after a Mason Lowry hooking penalty with about 827 left in the third period. And then that's when the Bruins turned it on. Charlie Coyle delivered a shorthanded goal. 642 left in the third period. Took a pass from Brad Marchand. And then uh, and then scored. Top shelf. Where, you know, they hide the peanut butter and hide the other stuff up there, too. Uh, but Charlie Coyle delivered tonight. And Brad Marchand, Mr. Shorty. That's what I've nicknamed him. Maybe that assist can help him out a little bit. Get things going for him. But Brad Marchand kind of led the way there. Charlie Coyle finishes it off. And then Pavel Zaka also scored a goal in this one tonight. Uh, it was the old four minutes after Coyle scored. He had an assist on then the David Pasternak empty net goal for a two-point night. I don't want to hear about the empty net goal. Garbage goal by Pasternak. Right place, right time. Big bang, boom. Bruins win tonight. Your thoughts at 617 779 Zero ninety eight five. Again, I can't say enough. Uh, I can't say enough for about what Charlie Coyle has done. Six games remaining. Charlie Coyle has tied his career high in point total. Twenty four goals, thirty two assists, fifty six points in seventy six games. And just think about it. They've asked him to do everything. Every zone. And. With Bergeron and Krejci no longer here, the guy is filled in tremendously. Can't say enough for the job that Charlie Coyle has done this year and got the Bruins going tonight in a very boring, boring, boring game that turned out to be a third-period uh, onslaught. Let's call it that. Considering the team plays tight, close games, they shut the door tonight. Good win for the Bees. And we're here until midnight. If you want to react to it at 617-779-0985, we'll let you hear some of the audio coming up in just a little bit here. Uh, the Red Sox are in action as well. There's some Celtics news that is out there. And a big game tomorrow night for the Green as well when they only have about six games to go as well. So we're here until midnight. Anything you want to talk about, we can also talk about the the passing of Larry Lucchino today uh, and what he meant for the Red Sox as well. 617-779-0985. We're also on YouTube, so go check out the channel, 985thesportsup.com. You can chat in. I like to read the chat, and I say your names over the air, so uh, feel free to uh, send anything in. We got Skaz here. We got Ryan Bell here as well. One more hour to go. I'm Joe Murray. Let's get a look at the headlines right now.
stopped by Omar, left to right. Ryan O'Reilly cannot believe it. He looks to the heavens in disbelief. Ah, look into the heavens in disbelief. Yes, Nashville, you could not score against the Bruins tonight, and you couldn't put them in a situation to blow the game. Something they've been doing all year long. But instead, the Bruins get their fifth shutout of the season. Linus Allmark gets his second. And oh, ho, Linus Allmark. Since the reported refused trade, 4-2.950 save percentage. That's good. Very good. So the story is this. I'll, I'll, I'll line them up for you guys at 617-779-0985. Who's the goalie in the playoffs? Who's the goalie? And is it the platoon? That's on the table. Uh, let's get you caught up on everything that happened in the game tonight. I can tell you what happened. First period, nothing. Long intermission. Second period, we tried banana bread. But what happened? Nothing. Third period, Bruins get the old hooking. But Charlie Coyle and and Brad Marchand on the old penalty kill. Nice pass from Marchand to Charlie Coyle, who finally lifts the lamp, and there's some excitement in the building. Puck thrown in deep. Allmark cut it off. He'll drill it off the glass, and down it goes. Marchand's got it at center ice. He's with Coyle. Into the slot. Coyle shorthanded. Walks in. Shoots. He scores! Charlie Coyle! Bruins. Fans are allowed there in Nashville, huh? There was a couple of goals tonight, guys. We were listening to it. I thought it was the Nashville team that scored. When it was one nothing, and then it would they scored immediately after, which we'll get to in a second. I, I thought there was I thought those were Bruins. I thought those were Nashville fans. Instead, they were rooting for the Bruins. It sounded like the Bruins fans were hitting Broadway before this one. Yeah. So the bees go up one nothing, and again, I just want to mention that it was Brad Marchand who started the thing. Marchand started it. He's struggled. And Coyle, what can I say anymore? Guy's been outstanding. Really. The the team this year went without Bergeron and Krejci. And they said, ah, Charlie Coyle can do the job. Pavel Zaka, he can do the job. And oh, speaking of Pavel Zaka, nice little insurance goal here for the Bees. Bruins hack it up the far side. Can't get it out. Poke check. Pachanak comes back, swipes it. He'll skate it out to center ice. Out of the line, right side against the forward. Smith, right of the net. Pachanak centered. Heinen, out in front. They score! Pavel Saka coming down the chute. Drills it home. 2 0 Bruins with 2.42 left. Pavel Zaka, another one of those guys. Where this year you wondered. If they could be a top pairing, and they are, as far as the the old uh, center and face-offs, they've struggled. Everyone has struggled. Coyle's been the best that they've had, especially in the defensive zone. But they get the, the shorty. They get the insurance goal. And then, you know what? Why not? How about David Posternak sends everybody home with the old empty netter? Near corner peak, scrambles back to get it. Plays it to the far side. Swatted in the middle. Saucer to out to center ice. Pasternak flipped it up the middle. He scores! David Pasternak is 46th, an empty netter. And that should do it. Bruins three, Predators nothing with a minute 24 left. I don't want to hear about the cheap goal. The em- Nope. This game sucked. It was boring. We needed points. We needed goals. We needed excitement. And we got it with eight minutes to go in the third period. Eight minutes left in the third period. And the bees came out on top tonight. Your thoughts at 617-779-0985. So the Bruins will close out their six-game road trip Thursday against Carolina. And I'm interested to see that game because whenever they have a good effort, how do they follow it up? And I know it's easy to say, Joe, that game against Florida last week was good. It was. But they had a back-to-back against Tampa Bay, hung around, and then blew it. And Allmark was in net. So, again, Allmarks has four wins since the trade deadline. The two losses stand out, but I think those are more of a team thing than necessarily him. 
But Charlie Coyle delivered tonight. I wonder if Brad Marshan gets going now with the assist. Zach has been praying pretty well of late. Let's see if they can go on a little. This was a good team win. I'm talking 60 minutes, solid defense tonight. So uh was impressed with the win. And uh, I, I was curious about um, just the fans that were there tonight. It, it sounded it sounded like it was a uh, definitely a Boston atmosphere. And uh, Saros has been awesome, by the way. Can we just mention that? He had 30 saves, 2.23 goals against he's been 12 and 2 on the year in his last 16 starts he's been outstanding but the Bruins found a way to get past him so yeah that that was kind of one of my takeaways was they were going up against one of the best goalies in the league at least playing like it right now well no he is one of the best goalies in the league also a team that had won like 16 straight games and then lost two in a row so the Bruins were kind of getting them in a spot coming off back-to-back losses where you figured you'd get their a effort and the Bruins played just a really, really good professional game of hockey. Just dominant. I don't even want to say dominated because they didn't really dominate, but they just took care of business. They took care of it. Am I asking too much for them to get out to an early lead, or do they usually blow those anyways? I was going to say, I don't know if that's what you want. Yeah. So, I mean, it's kind of like when it came down to it, it was Nashville and their team that had some cracks tonight where the Bees fought through it. I heard Bob mention it too that Saros is only like five foot ten, which is like unheard of for an NHL for, yeah. goalie. So I mean, he's a good story. He's a really good player. But yeah, that that Nashville team has been maybe the best team in hockey since the break. And for the Bruins to beat them three nothing in Nashville, that's that's all you're asking for right now. Take just care our of business. Just our last sixteen games, Saros was twelve two and two, and they got him tonight. They got him. Your thoughts at six one seven 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 nine. Zero at 98.5. Grace was at the game tonight. What's going on, Grace? You're on the Sports Hub in Boston. Hi. Um, yeah, my dad and I went to the game. We came down from Rhode Island. And um, to be honest, it was, I think, like a three-to-one ratio of Bruins fans to Nashville fans. It was insane. There was, like, fighting for the chance in the stadium. It was more like, let's go Bruins over let's go Predators. There was trash talking. It was such a good atmosphere for like such a good game as well it was a little nerve-wracking the first and second period but the third period just like sealed the deal and it was the atmosphere in the crowd was amazing how, how are the nashville fans after the uh after the coil goal and then when david Pasternak sent everyone home oh they were so mad it was people were like they're gonna lose in the first round of the playoffs anyways we're like, you just lost 3 nothing. You have no place to be saying what we're going to do. I agree with that. How's the food in Nashville? On a shorthanded goal, too. <laughs> How, how's, how's the food in Nashville? I, I'd like to ask. Uh, I've never the been. The food is really good. Yeah. If what... you like hot chicken, this is the place to come. Do they serve hot chicken at the game? I think so. I think they do have. The arena's like crazy. The food they have in there, they have pubs. Like, they have everything. Mm. They have hot chicken. They have, like, your own cotton candy like self-make machine Ooh. they have everything in that arena it's so nice whoa a cotton candy machine yeah it was th- crazy i don't think i've ever i've ever experienced that before i hadn't either until i saw it <laughs> wow all right well you guys gonna go party in nashville now uh i have a flight to catch at six in the morning uh, tomorrow yeah. so all right, well, not be, in the cars you'll but be, you'll be home you'll be home in rhode island tomorrow to celebrate so thanks for calling oh yeah us. totally all right have a good night take care bye-bye. you too thank bye-bye. you so much yep, bye-bye sources on the ground hot chicken i mean it really did sound like three to one bruins fans mm. did you uh have you ever been in nashville no i was supposed to go uh this uh for the preseason for the patriots uh oh that's right and do like some uh you know audio engineering and stuff like that but uh didn't uh the person ended up being able to go mm. i was i was a filling guy you know your utility yeah. man your brock holt if you will so you were supposed to go and then so you didn't i didn't i, I would have been nice so that's definitely one of the places i'm not a big country music guy so i don't feel like it's a place i have to go but it seems like a pretty pretty good vibe vibe seems cool just not sure if I, it's trendy enough for me yeah, like, I don't really want to walk up and down Broadway. Oh, oh no, I'm not a stuff. walker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like to sit. Like, I think I'd enjoy New Orleans more than Nashville. Oh, let me tell you, boy. The food, 
New Orleans? I'm a seafood guy as well. So, okay. Yeah. I, I know we're getting off track here, but the best part about New Orleans is this. You go to the, the, the dome, right? You walk out, and you just either stop and get food or walk back to your hotel. No car involved, no nothing. You just, everyone empties out, and you walk back to your hotel. I went for WrestleMania a couple of years ago. Oh, man, the food was tremendous. And there's a place called the Ruby Slipper. Breakfast. <laughs> the biscuits and breakfast. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, this one, uh, I see a caller here. Maybe Ryan Bell can help us out with this one. Riley is in the car. Hey, Riley. Hey, Joe. How are you? I'm good. Joe, I know you're an occasional revs better here and there, and I just wanted to call in uh, just to say, you know, this team is an absolute disgrace, and I think that much like the Patriots, uh, Robert Kraft is just turning a blind eye to this team right now. Uh, There's no investment. Uh, This team is absolutely garbage. Not a single MLS win through five games. They just got absolutely trounced by Club America. Yeah, what happened? I think Robert Kraft two, is. It was 2 nothing at halftime. What happened there? Oh, we lost 4 0. 4 0. We got nil. absolutely trounced. 4 0. Mm. So, did they even have a shot against Club America, though? Uh, no. And, and Joe, I, I know you, you're a betting man. Mm. I would bet the mortgage that this team gets their ass kicked in mexico well okay well let's talk let's we don't give the revs a lot of talk so let's let's do it for a minute here new coach right um new. It, it, what, give me the what's the lowdown right now I, I like their new jerseys they sent me a jersey myself i liked it well, I, you know what, Joe? You might as well throw that jersey in the garbage because this team oh, no, it they should have kept they should have kept Bruce Arena. I don't know why he was fired. Yeah, we don't we we, we were off no. We need a dynasty it's version of the Revs. Much like he made a duck, we'll never know, Joe. Well, that, that's true. Maybe we need a dynasty version of the Revs. We, we just might. We can call it the pitch. <laughs> yeah. So, he's gone. Oh, man, that was your time to shine, bro. We were talking Revs right there. Hey, Ryan, do they suck? Thumbs up? Oh, wow, that's a big thumbs up. Are they going to compete? Double thumbs up. Okay. Are they going to compete for the MLS title? Is Lionel Messi going to play in the game because they suck so bad? Ooh. Okay. Are they giving fans false hope that Messi is going to play? Because I saw that email. Yeah. So they have to put down grass if he's going to play. And he's hurt right now. From so. what I heard, though, is they have monster truck the week before. And they're going to put grass down. Just for Messi. There you go. Not for their not not for, you know, the team they invest in or anything like that. Yeah, but that. you know what though? Good. Not if you're not if you, not No, no, if you're no I know what you're saying, team, but go ahead. Bring it. Messi wants grass. You get the grass. He wants grass. Let him give him the grass. And then they rip it up when he leaves. That's fine. Get Messi here. Get him here. If I'm Messi, I'm not playing here. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I get it. Oh, imagine the price of tickets that day and he doesn't play. Pissed. Pissed. Oh, talk about overpromising and under delivering. I get it. Listen, I get these Twitter people call all the time. The Revs, Joe. How come you don't listen? We're not. We're not blind or dumb. We we very much understand that both the Patriots and the Revs have the same owner, and the Crafts were voted the worst owners in MLS. They, and I believe they have the lowest payroll in MLS. Correct. But are we going to the games? Like, okay, Ryan's going to. But, like, I always want my, like, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, if you're going to be an owner, be a 100% owner. So I can feel, as a fan, I can see you being upset about it. I can see that. Tonight, though, I was it was on television, right? Fox uh, FX or whatever it was? It was on Fox Sports 2 tonight. <laughs> All right, well. So Fox Sports 2 got to watch Club America club the New England Revolution. Yes, at Gillette Stadium. And everyone who bet against them won, hit the hit the hit the all the lines, the minus one, the minus two, the minus three, the the nil, the shutout, you name it. 
And that's your Revs Minute. See, Ryan, this is a this station. If you want to have the voice of the Revs, dude, it's all yours, man. It's all yours, dude. Do you want to talk about the Revs or write about them? You can do it right here. All right, well, Bruins win. Revs lost. The Red Sox are on. And there was a return of a certain player tonight in the NBA that might be Celtics-related. And by the way, that team played the team the Celtics are playing tomorrow. And we'll take more Revs calls, Bruins calls, whatever you guys want to do until midnight tonight. I'm Joe Murray. You're listening to 98 Bob, the Sports Hub. More Joe Murray coming up on the Sports Hub.
This is something I feel like that needs to be done. The Red Sox used to have, like, the beards, the idiots. Remember all that? This Jaron Duran hair thing. We were talking about this last night's guest. So it's it's WrestleMania week, and one of the most famous wrestlers of all time is Hulk Hogan. And for those that know of Hulk Hogan and his hair, he had the blonde hair in the back, but it was bald on top. Over the years, Hulk Hogan lost to all of his hair. But he has the bandana still with the golden locks coming out of the back. I feel like the Red Sox should already have Duran hats with blonde hair, and we should be selling them at Fenway Park already. And if they're not, then I will sell them on the Joe Show website. We will do it. We will sell more Joey merch if we have to. But this has to get done. Red Sox hats, blonde hair, Duran. Because it's all I notice out there. He's on second base right now, dancing with his blonde locks. Maybe even helmets, Skaz. What about the helmet with the hair? So you pull it off, you know? Like I said, Hulk Hogan's got the bandana with that. Why not the hat? Could they sell, like, ice cream helmets with the hair? Oh, that'd the be so cool. In. In. Yeah, like a little Wally with the hair coming out. Oh, yes. Yes. And if Jeremy Conley's listening, because I hope he is, you're a Wally that you gave me I still have. I'm getting blonde hair for it. That's it. I'm working on it. It's the official mascot of the night show. Now he's on third base. <laughs> what do you got? I'm sorry. I was going to say, should be Hall of Famer, <laughs> Wally. Oh, that's right. I t- I did a 360. on. I, I completely flipped. I was so out on him and then was pissed that he the other guys got in and not him. But I feel like we should revisit that someday. Love to see when the next uh, the next ballot is. For, you know how for like the, the Felger and Mez have the final word, and they agree. I, I feel like you know, here's Joe upset about Wally the Green Monster, or Joe hating on Wally and then up, upset that he didn't get it. Anyways, your thoughts on anything you want, whatever. We're here till midnight. Six one seven 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 nine zero ninety eight five. I see you guys on YouTube as well. We here to chill with Joe. Talk sports, food, and pop culture. That's right. The Revs fans are out. Let's... Lewis and Franklin, or is it Luis? Hey, Hi, sir. Joey, let's rev it up, baby. <laughs> hey, I just came back from the game. 4 nothing. absolute embarrassment, all right? This team is not too good. Um, we want to know what happened to Bruce. Um, and everything that they're talking about, and we also just need an overall change. Also, shout out to Oliva's Milford Mass. Let's go, baby! All right, cool. I don't have a clue about Bruce Arena. I was going to say, I think we all want to know. No, no, I, I have, I have, I don't even want to speculate because I, don't, I, I, I've interviewed the guy a bunch. Nice guy. You know what else he used to eat on the air when we interviewed him? Well, I mean, whenever I did interview him, and so I didn't care about soccer, like. I love soccer, Ryan. You know, I love them. But whenever Bruce Arena would join the show, he was eating, and I wanted to know what he was eating, and most of the time it was a fruit cup. And again, my favorite, one of my favorite movies of all time is Half-Baked, and we all know about the fruit cup and Nasty Nate and the, and the was it the Turtle Master? Can't, now I can't remember his name, but it was Tommy Chong. Why am I forgetting it now? Anyways, can't give up the fruit cup. Six one seven 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 nine zero ninety eight five. That Duran hair thing, I'm telling you, man. I think I think it could really take off. I think it could be a thing. Anyways, Bruins win tonight. Your thoughts? On David Pasternak's empty net goal, does it bother anyone? No, we're gonna hear. We're gonna hear about it tomorrow. Maybe one guy. You're gonna hear about it tomorrow. Now, I like the fact that when they have a lead, he wants to put it away. I I, I do like that. I like that. But yeah, you're probably gonna hear about Pasternak's 46 goals or whatever it is, and the Squirrel Master. Thank you. <laughs> 
<laughs> Gabe Davis. Thank you for that one. It was the squirrel master from Half Baked. It's my fruit cup. Oh, my God. People are coming home from the game tonight, huh? This revs things for real, huh? Pissed. Well, let's do it. Fine. People want to talk about the Reds more than the Bruins? Fine. Joshua, how you doing, Joshua? I could be better. I'm going to be honest with you. You bet the game? Yeah. <laughs> I was at the game. Oh, my goodness. How was the, uh, how was the weather? Disgusting. How was the weather? Uh, surprisingly, a lot better the second half. But, uh, yeah, no, just overall disappointing night. What what can they do? Like, is is it is the roster that was out there tonight the actual roster? Are their guys hurt? What, what's going on? Give me give me an update. Yes and no. Uh, this we definitely needed speed against Mexico, um, but I mean they just did not play like a team at all. They did not play the way they should have, and I think the team dynamic today, they just knew, they knew that they weren't prepared for this, and it showed. So you think that they knew they were going to lose? Anyways, so they tanked. Uh, I think they knew it was going to be a tough battle, and then once their dignity got uh, diminished, they just they did what they could. But at the end of the day, they just didn't have that gel. They didn't have that camaraderie that they needed, and it just didn't didn't perform the way they should have. Can this team have camaraderie? Do they know each other? <laughs> oh, for real. Uh, so no 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 certain games yeah, um, I mean the first the first round of the cup yeah absolutely but I don't know I I think it's a young team there's some good players on the team but at the end of the day I think it's still a young team it's up and coming and I mean they just need to get it together. So tonight you were like yeah man I'm going to the Revs game at Gillette and they're gonna take on Copa America and blah 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 and then you were just disappointed. Look it's round one we got round two coming in on Saturday. Um, I just thought it would be a little bit better of a game. I would have accepted a 1-0 loss today, and then we come out on top or at least make it better. But 4-0, disappointing. What, what do you do now? Do you eat your feelings? Do you get? What do you do now? You drink your feelings. Oh, well, what's the drink of choice? I mean, we got the beers deep already, but I, kind of I think we got to go tequila for the night. Ooh, te- wow, at 11.30 on a Tuesday night, bro? The class doesn't start till nine. We're good. <laughs> He's welcome anytime. <laughs> does Ryan Bell's mic work right there? I don't know if it does. I got. I got a. This guy said we. So like you know, Ryan. I don't know. We. We're on the. We're on the pitch. No, no, for real. Can you actually give me like in a minute or less what is to be excited about this year for the New England Revolution? Not a whole lot. So this game in particular, I think they just set up completely wrong. Um, you have a few players coming back from injury. They're right, bra- right back. Brandon By um, is out injured. Um, Byrick Teravich didn't start. He's a youngster. Uh, he's not injured, but I think he'll get more minutes as the season goes along. Um, but really, just need a number nine, a striker. Rioni's been not good at all he's a dp which means he doesn't count for the salary cap um, oh they're so oh they they're mani- one of their better they're, players they're manipulating the salary cap yeah so the <laughs> oh, MLS salary cap is a whole thing there's certain players you get a certain number of international players and then you get three designated players and one young designated players that, that don't count towards the salary cap so that's how Messi makes a boatload of money players like that so they can bring in european stars essentially and get more views the revs are manipulating the salary cap and the whole mls is playing kids that are young that don't hit the salary cap did they do that tonight is that who they played tonight to field no, the team? so it's 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 a whole mls thing it's not the revs specifically so it's an mls rule where there's three players they're called designated players that don't count towards the mls salary cap so for the revs they're their dps are Carlos Hill, um, Rioni, and then they have an open spot where they just lost Gustavo Bo. Mm. I said Copa America, and people are, you know, the Copa, like the, you know, Club America. Uh, can you tell me anything about Club America? I don't I don't know anything about them. Yeah, they play in League MX, which is the Mexican League. Um, generally, in my opinion, better than MLS. There's some debate there. I mean, the Revs 
right now are the worst team in MLS, and Club America is one of, if not the best team in in league, league MX. So, you know, there's a there's a little bit of a dynamic there where you get the worst MLS team and the best league MX teams. This was a scrimmage for uh, Club America. Yeah, and you talk about having a three to one ratio of Bruins fans in Nashville. It looked like a five to one ratio of Club America fans who traveled to Gillette. Um, so yeah, and and now to have to go play away in the second leg in Mexico, it's it's going to be worse. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if they lose six now. You better get out now before the storm comes. Go to Mexico for a couple of days. Wow. All right, well, we got a Revs expert on the show tonight with us. It's sad. Weren't they, like, in the final a couple of years ago? And, like, Matt Turner was, like, a big deal and all that stuff? Yeah, so in 2021, they won the Supporter Shield, which is basically, Ooh. it's like the President's Trophy in hockey. The, oh, really? You know, number one in the league. <laughs> then I think they lost in the second round or the first round even of MLS Cup, so it goes to playoffs. So they didn't the do well in the playoffs, shield. but they were the best team in the regular season. So, yes, they were very good. Mm. Maybe we can get a Supporter Shield in here. Joe Murray's Supporter <laughs> Shield. <laughs> and now they suck. Like the Patriots. And the Revs people are out there. I'm telling you right now. They're out there. They're out there and they're pissed. They're pissed. And rightfully so. Yeah, you know, like, soccer's big. It, it, I mean, internationally, it's huge. It's the biggest sport in the world. Sarge is one of my best friends and I love him. And he works the games. So I support him and the team. And they gave me a jersey. And we're the flagship. So I, I want to support them. 4-0, though? Four goals? That's that's a lot. That's a lot. It's a chunky. Uh-oh, you got a chunky. Is Caleb, Caleb Porter sounds like a really nice guy. I've had a chance to interview him before. Do, do you got any scoop on him? I know he likes to go to Newton restaurants. Yeah, not a ton on him. He's won two MLS Cups, which is two more than the Revs have in their Whoa. history. So, Whoa. I mean, he's got a pretty good pedigree, but it is not off to a great start here. I mean, after getting sacked in Columbus. so Wow. Uh, Club America is the best team in the Western Hemisphere. A total domination. We were like the Oakland A's tonight. <laughs> Probably a similar is that a, Is that a good comparison? The Oakland A's or the Revs? Yeah, I mean, he's not wrong. The you, Patriots, Revs, they don't want to spend money. And, you know, the Revs had a good run from really 2019 until 2022 where they were bringing in young talent. I would compare it to in the NFL bringing guys in on a rookie deal. They had really good players, but they weren't paying them when it came time to pay them. And it's also different where players want to go and play in Europe, but they ended up just selling them off to Europe. And I, I did some calculations, actually. Whoa, the other people math, there. here we go. Between the sales of... Petrovich, Matt Turner, Tejon Buchanan, and Adam Buxa, they made $37.5 million and have reinvested almost none of it. Ooh, can you give me 300 words on that? I can give you a lot more than please, 300 words on please. that. Please, 300 words. We need, we need this one for tomorrow. We got to put that on the website. We need Rev's coverage. We're on at night. We're going to be interrupted by some of these Revs games. So they spent money, and they didn't allocate it, huh? Kind of like the money that they were going to give Calvin Ridley but haven't allocated the 20, supposed 20-plus million that they were going to spend on it. Hmm. Sounds familiar. Uh, is, is Robin in charge of the Revs, too? I don't. I, I'm curious. Who's in charge of the revs? Is Robert involved, or is it Jonathan, or Harry? I really don't know. All right. Well, your thoughts. Now you rev up your engine, like yeah, yeah, or like my snowblower, right? I get it going for the first time, and it's like smoky and. That was the revs tonight. Four nil loss. Hey. There could be a potential round one matchup for the Celtics. That's intriguing. Dude, we just got 20 minutes out of Revs talk. You believe that? 
Hey, if you want to call in and talk about it, we'll talk about it. This is the spot. People, hey, we'll talk revs. I will tell you, though, I love betting on the uh, Premier League World Cup. Oh, man, that's that's where it's at. The revs, though, maybe they're on auto fade. Auto fade. Maybe we can make some money against the I'll tell you what, revs. I'm going to be looking at that line on Saturday. <laughs> I'm already looking at it. They're going to Mexico away from a storm. You mean to tell me they're going to show up for a, a, a football game? That kid might not be the only one drinking tequila tonight. <laughs> All right, we got to go to headlines here on 98 Pound this point, though. Sports Hub Headline.
Uh, sources confirm that people were at the Reds game tonight. The traffic at the I-95 merger was uh, backed up. So their uh, source sources on the crowd. People are going home. There are a lot of people there tonight. And a lot of people are upset about it. Uh, by the way, the final hour of the sports was brought to you by Valvoline and Oil Change. Enjoy a quick and convenient vehicle maintenance this month. Visit NewEnglandOilChange.com for 15% off your next drive through oil change at Valvoline and Oil Change. Now open in Rainham, Reading, and Braintree. Talk about completely different sides of the world. Uh, so the Celtics are back in action tomorrow night. It's going to be a big game. And I didn't really look ahead to it, but Oklahoma City played tonight against the 76ers. And then they come to Boston tomorrow. But Joel Embiid came back tonight for the 76ers. Had a big night, 24 points, 6 rebounds, 7 assists. Chet Holmgren played well for Oklahoma City. But uh, no SGA, I believe, right? Yeah, no SGA tonight. Josh, That's probably why Embiid came back. Exactly. Maybe, well, <laughs> your point, yeah. He's been he, ducking Jokic, now he's ducking yeah, SGA. The MVPs. Do we see SGA tomorrow night? And I got to find out what his injury is. If he's out tonight, I would guess no. But, I mean, it would, if you're a Celtics fan, you paid for that ticket, you'd want to see him. Because um, I know he had that game winner against, what, the Knicks the other night? So, if he's out tonight, plays tomorrow, and what's the status of Jalen Brown? We talked about this, the hand injury. Could it be a thing? I thought he hurt his hand the other night. I really did. And he stayed out there, and he toughed through it. It was really good against New Orleans. But no SGA, then I'd probably go no Brown. And they're on a back-to-back? So, and listen, Oklahoma City's a damn good team. Like, if you're not watching in the Western Conference, um, Holmgren went off tonight, but Wiggins, the kid Dort can still shoot the three. He went three of six tonight. And then John, Josh Giddy. Who uh, our buddy Bryson is a big fan of. And then Isaiah Joe. Remember him? Off their bench. By the way, Bryson got a job. Did you hear about that? Is that working in Oklahoma City now? Yeah, I was talking to him last week. Yeah, hear about that, Ryan Bell? All the all the interns are getting jobs that we've had. You're an intern, you get a job. All that rev stock you were just doing, who knows? Might be a place for you. I'm being serious. So now this sets up two things. Tomorrow night, Oklahoma City versus the Celtics. It's probably the last game of the year. You see the full Celtics with with the remaining games. Their schedule is weak. But this is the the last tough game where I think you see everybody. But if Jalen Brown's dealing with a hand thing, I'd sit him out. And I am wondering about that because if you think about Jason Tatum, he went against the wrist surgery this year. Got the. Um, it's two years now. Two years, and and he wanted surgery, but he wanted an actual year where there was no setbacks, no anything. He's probably going to need. He had the cortisone shot. Maybe he had another one. I haven't seen him like, like favor his hand or anything this like that. Jalen Brown, on the other hand, remember he hurt his gl- hand watering plants, which <laughs> doesn't smell right. I'm sorry. You hurt your hand watering plants, bro? That's like Rondo when he fell in the shower, remember? But yet he was at the trampoline park during the day. (laughs) I'm still not buying. I don't know how he's off the hook on that one yet. It was quick. It was smelly. (laughs) It was smelly. But the Celtics could 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 now see the Philadelphia 76ers in the first round. Ooh. I'd like him. i take my chances. I think the Celtics win that series in six. Gentlemen sweep. Or oh, that would be five. Uh, but you know what? They make it harder on everybody. So six. But tomorrow night, that's what you get. B's off now uh, until Thursday. They'll take on Carolina. And the Red Sox taking on the, the Revs of Major League Baseball. The Oakland A's. 4-4 game, bottom of the eighth. Do you think we see Kenley Jansen tonight? I mean, this is a spot for him, right? Tie game going to the ninth. Yeah, I'm already looking in the bullpen. <laughs> I wonder if the Nesson. How about Ness? Hey, Nesson! Put the camera on the bullpen! 
I want to see if Jansen's warming up. Put the camera on the bullpen. They used to do that back in the day. We're really good at that. At least we have uh, a clear television tonight. Considering the two games, the Bruins are on two different Nessons, and it worked. No issues, at least as I know. All right, that's it for tonight, guys. We're here tomorrow. What do we got tomorrow? Celtics. Games at 8.30? Yes, and we will have Cerrone battle post game. Nice. And pregame tomorrow night, I'm going to be joining Michael Felger on the off-air show. Thought about doing some in or out with him. What do you think? Love it. Should I talk? ask him about narratives? You can't be a fence sitter during in and out. You got to be in or out. Got to be in or out. No. Oh, yeah, that's right. Got to be in or out. So tomorrow night, 6, 6 15. I don't know. what It's on Facebook. I don't have Facebook. All right. Thank you, everybody. The Jeremy Conley, always checking in. Ryan Bell, thank you for your revs. And the James Scaramazino onesie. I'm Joe Mario. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow night, 7.